people often uh, discuss with me and uh, they uh, you know they tell me ask me about you know some secrets of astrology people are very interested in knowing the secrets of astrology i say my friend leave the secret first of all let's properly know what is already obvious what is clearly told do we understand it properly after that you go to what is secret stalking of parashar i will talk about the most important contribution of parashar it seems like that before parashar this concept is not there so this concept is introduced by parashar so you know there are 12 houses in horoscope and in the previous shloka you remember the previous uh, video on d2 divisional chart i talked about a shloka there and that shloka specifically told about the lord of the rashi it says tat chetram tat khetasya that means lord is the planet is the lord of rashi and planet is also lord of the house where the rashi falls so technically there is no lord of the house only rashis are lorded by planets and the planet who is lord of the rashi which is falling in the house is also the lord of the house so basically we generally say sun is the fifth house lord it is wrong sun is lord of leo and if leo is falling in the fifth house then sun becomes the lord of the fifth house right technically sun is the lord of leo so keeping this particular thing in mind we come to understand that in vedic astrology there is no particular differentiation between houses and rashi, houses and rashis for this particular reason it seems like there is a concept of chalit chakra is not supported by classics seems like that and this is true also but let's leave the point it seems to me that before parashar of course astrology was developed predictive astrology was developed before parashar also the concept was simple the rashi is falling in the house and the lord of the rashi is also the lord of the house and houses are having different significations rashis are having different significations and with the permutation and combination between houses and planets predictions are given this once again the simple line that i have just told you in less than 1 minute is very very important that connection between this particular thing is very important you can you can you know you can just go deeper into it and you can uh do a 4 or 5 6 hour long class on this particular simple point but that's not my topic parashar have introduced something that is the concept of yoga karak so what parashar have done he have grouped the houses before parashar what is happening planets are lord of different houses these houses are having significations and as planet becomes lord of a particular house he also starts ruling the signification of the house for example seventh lord Seventh house indicates marriage, and there will be a Rashi in the seventh house. The lord of that particular Rashi will also be the lord of the seventh house, and no matter who that planet is, that planet will always also have responsibility to show about the prospects of marriage through the horoscope. Right? This was before Parashar. Parashar comes in between, and he introduces a concept of grouping of houses, and with this grouping of houses comes the concept of yoga karak. yoga means what yoga astrologically means combination right yoga can have multiple meanings also yoga is basically coming together of two separate objects coming together of two people coming together of one person and one object coming together of two object it can be yoga is basically union in astrology yoga is particularly combination so what parashar did he made a combination of houses set of houses he clearly defined it and he told that these are the good houses these are the bad houses and when planets are planets lording good houses are connected with each other the life is good planet lording bad houses are connected with each other the life is not very good as such it is a normal mediocre life see understand the point i am very serious about what i am saying i am not saying that when the lord of the bad houses are connected with each other they make something such as vipreet rajyog no 
विपरीत राजयोग नीच भंग एक्सेट्रा दीज आर द कॉन्सेप्ट विच हैव टू बी वेरी डीपली अंडरस्टूड मे बी इन सम अदर वीडियो वी कैन टॉक अबाउट इट बट फॉर द टाइम बिंग लेट्स लिव इट देर इज अ कनेक्शन बिटवीन टू गुड हाउसेज पर्सन विल लिव अ ब्यूटिफुल लाइफ लाइफ ऑफ सक्सेस हैप्पीनेस एक्सेट्रा लॉर्ड ऑफ टू डू two bad houses will be connected person will live a normal life life of a normal person there will be connection of one good house and one bad house in that particular scenario person will live a life of trouble so basic point is the good houses the lord of the good houses their connection talks about how the life is going taking yoga in the concept of see yoga is union yoga is formation yoga is combination so everyone is a person in this world male person female person everyone is a person you are talking about horoscope of a living being person human whether this person will become a great person is yoga person plus greatness is equal to great person this is yoga and the planet who have the capacity to make you from person to great person is the yoga kari planet and this planet is very very important in astrology when two yoga kari planets are connected with each other it gives birth to raj yoga or it gives birth to a good yoga and this good yoga leads, leads you to name fame status wealth recognition success right these things it leads you to on the other hand when raj yoga is not being formed the raj raj the yoga karaka planets basically there will be two yoga karakas as per every ascendant when these two yoga karaka planets are not connected but only the yoga karaka planet out of the two any one or both are powerful in that condition also person will live a successful life the success can be differentiated when the when the two yoga karakas are connected with each other it is more like a raj yoga where the person have good name fame status recognition position and authority in life on the other hand when only the yoga karaka planets are powerful not connected with each other in that scenario person is a influential rich well to do person though he may not be popular he may not have he may not be at the top of his profession but still he is successful so two thing is there raj yog is happening person is professionally successful he is at the top of his profession and whatever results come out of it right name fame status many people to serve you great contacts these will be there whereas when raj yoga is not happening but only your kara planet is powerful in that scenario also you live a very successful life in this particular case you may not be at the top of your profession but that is okay right still wealth family resources that you have in life that makes you a special person that gives you special position to enjoy in life right so first of all let's understand how do we identify the yoga karak from the horoscope right the concept is simple i will give you example of one ascendant and it can be in the same manner applied to different horoscopes as well first point that you have to remember that planets can be lord of mutually one eight houses for example mars and venus their rashis are one eight to each other right taurus libra one eight to each other aries scorpio one eight to each other. secondarily planet can be mutually lord of four ten houses these are mercury and jupiter so virgo gemini is 4 10 to each other scorpio pisces is 4 10 to each other planet can be lord of 2 12 houses this is only one planet saturn two rashis of saturn capricorn aquarius is 2 12 to each other then lastly is moon and sun who lords one house only so no confusion so far right now the first thing is lagna lagna or the first house is the most important house the lord of this house is called as lagnesh lagna is included both in kendra and in kona both so lagna is kendra quadrant also that is 1 4 7 10 houses and lagna is trine kona also that is 1 5 9 houses 
the concept is very simple if a same if the same planet is the lord of kendra and kona both houses the planet becomes yogakari producer of yoga now because lagna as a house itself is both a kendra and kona lagna lord is always rajyog sir yogakari not rajyogari lagna lord is always yogakari lagna lord always yogakari okay this is one point what i told you yogakari means the planet can give you special status position and enjoyment in life this is my basic thumb rule i teach in every course since i started teaching in 2018 that horos in horoscope lagna is very important. if lagna is powerful lagna lord is powerful only then the person can be successful his life is worth living if the lagna or lagna lord is not powerful then the life of the person is not worth living he is not successful at all he is living a life of misery he is living a life of problem he is living a life of trouble for the complete life he will struggle and ultimately whatever happens to everyone will also happen right so the power and the strength of the lagna lord is very essential if you want your life to be worth living for that particular scenario in any case in any situation in any circumstance make sure that lagna lord is powerful or if it is not powerful then we are the gemstone of the lagna lord make the do the remedy of the lagna lord but make it powerful because if the lagna is not powerful lagna lord is not powerful the life is not worth living then now because planets can be lord of one or eight houses if the lagna lord is mars or venus it will be lord of eighth house or sixth house also in that scenario you may already know eighth house and sixth house are bad houses so if lagna lord becomes the lord of the eighth house or sixth house will he become a bad planet the answer to this is dubious as i told you that this is a principle which is well known well discussed in astrological world still people no don't know about things saturn can be the lord of 212 house so when the ascendant is of saturn particularly aquarius saturn can be lord of 12th house also bad houses third house is bad sixth house is bad eighth house is bad 11th house is bad 12th house is bad these are the bad houses okay good houses are kendra 1 4 7 and kona 5 9 these are the good houses remaining second house is a neutral house basically second house you can take neutral technically going by the word of the parashat 12th house is also taken as neutral so let's take 12th house is neutral also chalo bad nahi lete 12th to neutral lete 12th house is also neutral not bad okay so technically lagna lord cannot be the lord of 11th house or third house right so that let's leave the point mars venus when they are lagna lord or when saturn is lagna lord they can become lord of 6 8 or 12 house also in that particular scenario does lagna lord become a malefic no not at all lagna lord always becomes a yogakari always remains a yogakari and the strength of the lagna lord is good only despite the fact that lagna lord 6th house lord 8th house lord or 12th house lord does not matter it is told that lagna lord does not get the blemish of lording 6th 8th or 12th house that means lagna lord does not become malefic at all however talking of success out of these good houses and bad houses if lagna lord is situated in bad house it makes the life troublesome as i told you know the strength of the lagna lord indicates whether the life is worth living or not lagna lord is going into these houses third house sixth house eighth house and 11th house it makes the life troublesome in this particular scenario also second house and 11th house is known for dhana yoga are the houses that gives wealth so technically lagna lord goes to 11th house it gives wealth to the native but 11th house is taken is in bad house so lagna lord in 11th house essentially is troublesome in the starting later on it can give wealth also best wealth combination will be 11th lord going to lagna that will be better as compared to lagna lord going to 11th lagna lord is going into the good houses first house fourth house seventh house tenth house fifth house and ninth house good houses is good combination gives easy success makes the person successful life is worth living that means there are lot of resources enjoyments people to love you people to care for you very 
Lagna Lord is going into second house or twelfth house. It is a neutral house, and whenever we say neutral house, you have to decide based on Rashi. If Lagna Lord in second house or twelfth house is in a good Rashi, that basically means the planet is exalted. The planet is Varguttam. The Lagna Lord is in a friendly sign. It will give good result. On the other hand, if the Lagna Lord is an inimical sign, if the Lagna Lord is in debilitation sign, if the Lagna Lord is combust, if the Lagna Lord goes into planetary war while going into second and twelfth house, the life will become troublesome and miserable. It can happen that Lagna Lord is going into fourth house and there also Lagna Lord is combust in that particular scenario. Also, because Lagna Lord is combust, so there will be troubles in life. But because it is in the fourth house, which is a good house, it will be a supporting factor. Troubles will disturb the native, but because Lagna Lord is essentially situated in a good house, person will ultimately succeed. Person will ultimately become a winner and achiever. No doubt about it. Lagna Lord going into two twelve houses while being afflicted can come as a very very serious problem for the horoscope. Can come as a very very serious problem for the native. So it have to be taken seriously. Okay. Other than this, if Lagna Lord is becoming Lord of one or four, one fourth or tenth house, along see, a same planet cannot become Lord of Lagna and the seventh house goes out of question. If Lagna Lord is Mercury or Jupiter, they will become the Lord of fourth house or tenth house simultaneously with Lagna. In that particular scenario, this planet is very good. Such Lagna Lord should be made powerful, and if it is powerful, it becomes Yogagari. It gives success in life. Lagna Lord also becoming the Lord of the fifth and ninth house also cannot happen. So that point is also gone, right? This is point number one. So now you have understood what is a good house, what is a bad house, and everything else. Basic point, right? Now let me quickly jump to the topic because as I told you, this is a very big topic. This is the most popular principle. This is the greatest contribution of Parashar, and everyone who knows about Parashar astrology also knows about this principle. If you want to learn this principle in depth, this will take more than ten hours, right? But still, let me tell you in nutshell. Basic principle is: except for sun and moon, all the planets will lord two rashis. That you know, Mars rules Aries and Scorpio, Taurus rules Libra, and sorry, Venus rules Taurus and Libra, Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo, Jupiter rules Sagittarius and Pisces, Saturn rules Capricorn and Aquarius, Moon and Sun they rule one one rashi each. Moon rules Cancer, Sun rules Leo. the basic point is in the good houses which are the good houses which are the good houses importance of lagna lord i have told you good houses i will write as good lagna is good fourth house is good Tenth house is good, though seventh house is taken as Kendra, but it is not taken as a good house because it is Marak house. This is particular point. No, this principle is, as I told you, this principle is very common. This principle is open. This is the major Parashari principle. Every anyone who knows about Parashar knows about this principle also. But do they understand it? No. That's the problem. That's why I'm telling you. No, people are behind the secrets, but they even don't know what is very obvious in astrology, right? So. basics need to be the known principles the easiest principle have to be perfected first only after you have perfected the known principle after that only things can go correct right basic point is a planet will be lord of two houses and out of these two houses in this second house and 12th house is taken as neutral okay neutral neutral if a planet is a lord every planet will be lord of two houses if the both the houses of the planet is falling in good houses if both the rashi of the planet is falling in good houses the planet will become rajyogakari planet rajyogakari planet means this singular planet can give you rajyoga i have clearly told you what is yoga and what is rajyoga what is the difference if a singular planet owns both the good houses that singular planet will become rajyogakari if the planet becomes rajyogakari to get the rajyog the planet does not need to make connection with any other planet this singular planet just by being powerful in horoscope can bestow rajyoga 
Now, which planets can become Lord of two good houses? For Gemini and Virgo ascendant, Mercury will be such planet. For Sagittarius and Pisces ascendant, Jupiter will be such planet, Lord of two good houses. For Capricorn and Aquarius ascendant, Venus will be one such planet, Lord of two good houses that you can calculate yourself. For Taurus and Libra ascendant, Saturn will be one such planet, Lord of two good houses. For Cancer and Leo ascendant, Mars will be as Mars will be such planet which will be Lord of two good houses. Okay. So how many Rashis we have covered for Capricorn Aquarius? It will be Venus. For Gemini Virgo, it will be Mercury. For Sagittarius Pisces, it will be Jupiter. For Cancer Leo, this will be Mars. 2 to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 Rashis we have covered. Which Rashis are left out? Aries. Scorpio. Right. These Rashis are left out. Aries, Scorpio. For the Rashi of Taurus and Libra, Venus will be the, sorry, for the Rashis of Taurus and Libra, Saturn will be the Rajyokara. So these are how many Rashis we have covered? 2 to 4 to 6 to 8 to 10. These are the 10 Rashis. Two Rashis are there, Aquarius and Scorpio, for which there is no clear planet which comes as Raj Yoga Karan. Right? In this particular scenario, Moon and Sun, Lord, one house each. The principle is essentially related to two houses. So basically, though Cancer is ruled by Moon and Leo is ruled by Sun, but for this particular purpose, what Parampara tells you that take Sun as the Lord of both Cancer and Leo and Moon also as Lord of both Cancer and Leo. So technically meaning for Aries Ascendant, Cancer will be 4th house, Leo will be 5th house. For Scorpio Ascendant, uh, Cancer will be the ninth house and Leo will be the 10th house. So for Aries and Scorpio Ascendant, Sun and Moon, actually these two planets are the planets which are Raj Yoga Kari in itself. And if this is a singular planet, I will repeat, for Taurus, Libra, Ascendant, Saturn, for Capricorn, Aquarius, Ascendant, Venus, for Gemini, Virgo, Ascendant, Mercury, for Sagittarius, Pisces, Ascendant, Jupiter, for Cancer, Leo, Ascendant, Mars, and for Aries, Scorpio, Ascendant, Sun and Moon. If these planets, these planets are Raj Yogakari, and these planets being powerful, powerful means these planets being in Onarashi, these planets being in Mula Trikona, these planets being in Exaltation, these planets being Vargottam, these planets being Retrograde also. Retrograde is a strength. These planets being Retrograde in the horoscope, having special power in horoscope, makes Raji Yoga all by itself. These are the planets who can make Raji Yoga all by itself. They don't need support of any other planet to make the Raji Yoga. Understood the point? Now comes the second category of planet. The planet is Lord of one good house and another neutral house. Now you see what is happening. If the planet is Lord of Lagna, it can be Lord of 12th house or it can be Lord of 2nd house or just yes, Saturn. Only when Saturn is the Lord of Lagna, it can become the Lord of 2nd house or 12th house also. Planet becoming Lord of Lagna Planet becoming Lord of 4th house can become the Lord of the 11th house. Sorry, planet becoming Lord of the 4th house can become Lord of the 2nd house. 4th house and 2nd house are 311. No planet rules 311 to each other. No two Rashi of planet is 311 to each other. It cannot happen. 4th Lord also becoming the Lord of the 12th house. No, no two Rashis of the same planet are 59 to each other. So that will not happen. 10th Lord becoming Lord of 12th house cannot happen. 10th Lord becoming Lord of the second house cannot happen. Goes out of question. Neutral houses are only 220. Now, 5th Lord becoming second Lord also, can it happen? Yes. 5th Lord becoming 12th Lord also, can it happen? Yes. To which planet? Mercury, Jupiter, Mars, Venus. These four planets, when they are becoming Lord of 5th house, can also become the Lord of the 2nd house or 8th house. In the same manner, these four planets, when they become the Lord of the ninth house, can also become Lord of neutral house. That means when Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, 
और मार्स बिकम लॉर्ड ऑफ द नाइन्थ हाउस दे कैन ऑल्सो बिकम लॉर्ड ऑफ ट्वेल्थ हाउस और सेकेंड हाउस विच इज अ न्यूट्रल हाउस द प्लेनेट विच ओन्स वन गुड राशि एंड अनादर बैड राशि आई विल रिपीट द प्लेनेट विच रूल्स वन गुड राशि एंड अनादर न्यूट्रल राशि इज टेक्निकली योग कारक प्लेनेट नॉट राजयोग कारक प्लेनेट बट योग कारक This basically means this particular planet, which can be Saturn for Aquarius and Capricorn ascendant only, or Mercury, Jupiter, Mars, Venus when they are becoming Lord of fifth house or ninth house. But you have to make sure there another Rashi is either falling in second house or twelfth house. So these five planets in total: Saturn, Venus, Mars, Mercury. and jupiter these four planets become yogakari when they are lord of one good house and another neutral house in such combination they have to take relationship of in this particular scenario if they take relationship of another yogakari planet relationship of another yogakari planet means what relationship of another such planet who is capable of producing yoga if they make relationship with such planet they will produce a raj relationship of how many by how many ways relationship can happen according to parashar there are four methods using which relationship can happen between two planets the most powerful and the first one out of it is exchange planet a goes into the rashi of planet b planet b comes in the rashi of planet a is termed as exchange right for example venus in the rashi of mars mars in the rashi of venus exchange most powerful relationship second most powerful relationship is aspect of dispositor you see saturn goes into scorpio and it is aspected by mars in this scenario saturn is in the sign of mars it is aspected by mars so saturn and mars are having a strong relationship this is second most powerful third most powerful is mutual aspect every planet aspects the seventh house to each other so when planets are seventh house to each other there will be mutual aspect or saturn and mars when mars is in 10th to saturn and saturn is in 4th to mars they can make mutual aspect this is third most powerful lastly conjunction of two planet in this conjunction some people take degrees leave the fools one planet at 0 degree of a rashi another planet at 29 degree of the rashi if they are in same degree is into a conjunction one planet in 29 degree of rashi another planet in 1 degree of the next rashi so they are very close but because they are two rashis apart there is no connection conjunction is the fourth most important type of connection a planet who is only yoga karak that means who is lord of one good house and another neutral house when they come in connection with another yoga karak then they will produce raj yoga this raj yoga if there is first type of connection it is most powerful raj yoga second type of connection second most powerful raj yoga third type of connection third most powerful type of raj yoga fourth type of connection fourth most important type of raj yoga they will produce and as i told you this raj yoga will give success to the native okay if they are not forming raj yoga they are not having any of these four types of connection with the other planet in that scenario still the planet is yoga karak and if this planet is powerful in horoscope powerful by being in exaltation sign being in non sign being in mool trikon sign being vargottam or being retrograde in that particular scenario this planet is yoga kari and at least it will produce the result that i will told you that i have told you for yoga karak planet right now comes the third category you see <clears throat> lagna lord if it becomes the lord of the 6th house and 8th house there will be no problem as such right 3 6 8 11 houses are bad houses you know i told you 3 6 8 11 house is bad house lagna lord can become the lord of 6th house and 8th house but lagna lord generally does not get blemish so there is no problem as such right 
Regarding Lagna Lord, see, Lagna Lord can be Lord of Sixth House. So you will say Lagna is indicator of health, sir. Lagna Lord, even if it is the Sixth Lord or Eighth Lord, it will save the health of the native. Partially, yes, but there is one more principle that you have to include that I am not teaching in today's video. So let's leave the particular part. Okay. Let's leave the point of the time being. Now, it is the other goods are four, ten, five, nine house lords. These are the bad houses. Now, basically, 10th lord, if you come back to horoscope, 10th lord can be the lord of the 11th house. Good houses. 10th lord can be the lord of the 11th house. Okay, out of bad houses. 10th house lord cannot be lord of 6th house or 8th house. 10th house lord can be the lord of the 3rd house. 4th house lord can be the lord of the 3rd house. 4th house lord can be the lord of the 11th house. If the 4th house lord becomes the lord of the 5th house, then it is singular Rajyokari planet that you already know, so that I am not covering. 5th house lord cannot become the lord of the 3rd house, can can become the lord of the 6th house. Can become the lord of the, yeah. 5th lord can become the lord of the 6th house. 5th lord can become the lord of the 8th house. Ninth Lord can become the Lord of the Eighth House. Ninth Lord can become the Lord of the uh, Ninth Lord can become the Lord of the Eighth House. Right? Ninth Lord cannot become the Lord of the Third House. Ninth Lord can Ninth Lord can become the Lord of the Sixth House also. Sir. Ninth Lord can become the Lord of Sixth House also. Ninth Lord cannot become the Lord of the Eleventh. In this particular scenario, where the Fourth Lord is also the Lord of Third or Eleventh House. 10th Lord is also the Lord of 11th and 3rd house. 5th Lord is also the Lord of the 6th and 8th house. And 9th Lord is also the Lord of the 8th house and 6th house. It is called blemished yoga karak. What it is called blemished yoga karak. That means this planet can produce yoga itself, but it is blemished. That basically means... This blemished yoga karak, if it is making connection with one yoga karak, yoga karak told before, unblemished yoga karak, that is lord of good house and lord of neutral house. If a planet which is lord of one good house and one neutral house forms connection with another planet which is lord of one good house and one bad house, that is blemished yoga karak, they make any of these four types of connection, they will produce Raja Yoga. Though this Raja Yoga will not be as powerful as it is happening by the by the strength of the singular planet who is complete raj yoga kara or by being the by or by being made by the planet who is the lord of both good houses not as powerful as that but it is akin to a raj yoga you say secondary level of raj the person who is having a singular planet lord of two good houses raj yoga kari planet that planet is powerful this person becomes a king the combination between pure yoga karak and blemished yoga karak, they are making a raja yoga. This person is not king, but very close associate of the king. So this is also raja yoga. Now the point was this yoga karak planet, the first category, unblemished yoga karak planet, if he is creating a raja yoga, it is okay. If it is not creating a raja yoga in that scenario also, if that planet is powerful, it can rather make a weak yoga. Right, so not Raj Yoga, but Rubik Yoga it can make. On the other hand, this blemished Yoga Karak, if he is not making a connection with unblemished Yoga Karak, that means if he is not able to produce a Raj Yoga in that particular scenario, he will give a bad result. Such planets should be pacified. Now, according to me, what I basically teach, any planet who is Raj Yoga Karak from the principle, first of all, Raj Yoga combination gives Raj Yoga to the person. But if the planet singular or planets more than one, which are making Raj Yoga is weak in the horoscope, then what may happen? Weak planet are not able to give the result. The result of Raj Yoga, success, enjoyment in life, the native will not feel. In that particular scenario, these planets have to be made powerful and because they are good planets, the gemstone of such planets should be, weak, should be warm. 
and wearing gemstone is one of the most beautiful most powerful remedy because once you wear it the remedy keeps on happening constantly and you don't have to worry much about it whereas in other types of remedies you will have to worry about doing the remedies over and over again right so this is very essential important point these are the planets these planets that i have told you these planets are the most important planets of the horoscope they have to be powerful if you want to be successful in life if they are not powerful success can be hindered and the prime purpose of consulting astrology consulting astrologer or looking at a horoscope is we are seeing how lucky or unlucky the person is in which matters the person is lucky or unlucky to decide in which matters the person is lucky or unlucky how will be my marriage how will be will i have a child when will i get a job for this thing the first method which is developed before parashar analysis of different houses for marriage analysis of 7th house 7th lord for child birth analysis of 5th house and 5th lord that needs to be done that i think you already know i don't have to repeat but one particular thing that can be there that is generally there in astrology is to knowing about how much successful one person can be in life this is from everything else right one person can be you know one person can be in a normal job other person can come from a very you know very weak background and even after coming from that weak background he can go on to become ias ips become very successful in life so what will be the level of success what will be the level of life of the native to know that this particular technique needs to be used in this particular scenario what i have told you you are very clear about the bad houses third house 6th house 8th house and 11th house are bad houses the lord of these houses are connected with each other gives you a life of a common person common problems not much success is there but it is a normal life right so third house struggle is there in life 6th house enmity and disease trouble troubles you 8th house there are ups and downs in life right and 11th house one have to work hard to fulfill wishes and desires it is a normal life what you call a common person on the other hand if third sixth eighth or 11th house lot all the beforehand raj yogas that i have told you can be destroyed by these planets one planet who is yoga karak if he is conjoined with a strong third lot is more stronger than the planet who is raj yoga producing third lot sixth lot eighth lot 11th lot is conjoined with a raj yogari planet afflicting the raj yoga kari planet it can destroy the raj yoga in this particular scenario life becomes troublesome because chances for raj yoga is there but that is destroyed it is like someone tries uh, uh, someone tries 5 7 years for ias ips job after trying for 5 7 years he does not get the job and because he have tried and have wasted his time so later on he goes into depression and then have to satisfy himself just by opening a normal grocery shop right so in this particular scenario when bad house lords and good house lords are connected it makes the life problematic right this is how this should be understood this is a very common technique i should tell you this is the backbone of parashari astrology or rather than using the word parashari astrology i should be using the word traditional astrology because today traditional astrology is so intermingled with parashari astrology that you cannot actually differentiate this is very basic principle of astrology and analysis of horoscope is incomplete without this particular thing that i have told you this content that i have taught you in this small hour is a content which if taught, taught in detail will take more than 10 hours but i have told you the basic of horoscope reading see people have a have, people have multiple methods of looking at a horoscope right analysis of houses only analysis of karkas only analysis of planets only this is all there it works also i will not say it does not work but if to do a comprehensive analysis of the horoscope to actually analyze the horoscope the way sages told us to do you will have to use this technique because it is backbone of sages so this is how you should read a horoscope right the parashar way and i hope everything is very clear okay so thank you